And we are motherfucking back. Stay tuned for the video. What's going on, YouTube? Happy Hollow the fuck ween, okay? Hope you all are warm and decided to snow over here in Wisconsin. And uh, if you got kids and y'all gonna take them out for candy, make sure you check them. Make sure you keep your eyes on them because unfortunately there's some fucking creeps out here. But anyway, you know, I had to get in the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Bam, got my Chucky shirt on. You already know. Boo! But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this American Horror Story review. I'm sorry I missed you guys last week. But I'm back. American Horror Story 1984 Season 9, Episode 7, The Lady in White. Woo! So, once again, we are back at the camp. And it looks a little bit older than usual, like way back in the day. And we see old girl Misty. Okay, she didn't went, she didn't had another life uh, being like a, a lunch lady. Uh, cleaning lady for all these kids at this camp and uh, come to find out she got two kids Benjamin and Bobby now we all know Benjamin uh, soon to be Mr. Jingle Jangles but before this he was you know young and he had a little brother and uh, you know they was in their own little space coloring uh, reading comics and stuff and you know obviously they appear to be the odd kids because you know how you know kids can be i've experienced it especially when you're a child that's got a little fluff on your side you know what i'm saying kids can be so evil and malicious and rude and ignorant so i could understand uh poor little benjamin and uh you know yeah but anyway uh misty she come in and check on the kids and you know she was saying you know y'all need to make friends pretty much and benjamin you know she was saying you know if you stop reading all them comics and everything you know, you probably make some friends. And she was, like, trying to compare and contrast her favorite son, which was Bobby, obviously. And she, like, went off on him because she was like, I need you to be more something like Bobby. Well, she didn't say like Bobby, but he was, like, like Bobby. And she was like, you know, I work my ass off, and I don't need you to be all sarcastic with me. You know, just going off on the poor boy. I'm like, lady, calm down. This is your son. What the hell is wrong with you? But anyway, she goes off, and uh, he, you know, Bobby, he breaks up the tension between his mama and his big brother. And uh, she he asked, can they go swimming? And she was like, yeah. And, you know, missed it. Well, excuse me, uh, the mom. I don't, I forgot what her name was. I don't even think they said her name. Uh, all we know is that's moms. That's mother. Anyway, that's mama. Uh, she tells Benjamin to make sure, you know, to look after, um, you know, little Bobby. So they go over to the pool. Little Bobby, well, we didn't see little Bobby yet. But um, Benjamin, he was just, you know, standing by his lonesome. And these two girls, they come from, you know, being in the water, the lake, whatever. And, you know, he was like, how's the water? And she was, and he, one of the little heifers was like, you know, it's cold, but you got enough blubber to warm, keep you warm. I say, you little bitch, you little bitty bitch. Okay? You better hope you ain't got no type of parasite to crawl up your ass being in that lake, you little heifer. But anyway, just rude. Ooh, Lord, took me back. Oh, my God, because it wasn't easy for me being a young girl in school. But that's for another story. That's for another video. That's for another time, right? But anyway, um, little Bobby, he comes over here with his, with his little trunks and all. And, uh, you know, he wanted to get in the water. But Benjamin was like, no, just sit by the water. Don't go in it. And I, I knew that was a bad idea. Because Benjamin, he saw one of the lifeguards in one of the little, little uh, horny ass counselors they go to the back somewhere he was like he was just that's when he told bobby just stay just sit down don't go in the water so bobby sits down for for the time being and benjamin he goes sneaks off to be like this bit of a creep and watching the lifeguard and the uh little counselor girl you know get into what they were doing right and uh where was i at so bobby he decides to go in the water and when uh, Benjamin, when he gets back, Bobby has just the fuck appeared. And I'm like, oh, shit. So Bobby, however, he pops up out the water. He was just playing games and stuff, you know, some Summer Walker type shit. And uh, all of a sudden, these men, they decide to get on this little boat. And they start up the little motor, the little engine, the little brr, brr, And all of a sudden, I guess Bobby, he didn't realize that he was swimming to the boat or however it happened. Or they was, no, they was starting to move. And Benjamin was like, hey, 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 hey. And all of a sudden, you hear like, I said, damn it, Bobby is the fuck dead. 
And so they get him out the water, you know what I'm saying? They got him covered up so nobody see all that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, here come Mama, you know, Mama Misty in another life. And, you know, she was like, what happened? What did you do? You know, that whole, what did you do? Blaming, you know, the child and all that. And Benjamin was like, I'm sorry. You know, it was an accident. And then, you know, the lifeguard, he comes out of the woods after, you know, yeah. And she was like, you know, where the hell was you at? You know, this is your fault. You killed him. Everybody, everybody guilty. Everybody guilty. All y'all is guilty for killing my son. And so she does this dramatic scene. And, you know, she's blaming Benjamin again. And she turns to Bobby. And Bobby is dead to the bed. Well, dead to the little pavement and everything. And it was just a little sad, crazy scene. And then we get to the dope-ass intro. I just love the intro. I love the little 80s remix to it. Awesome. So, anyway... We get to Brooke and Donna, because if you remember from last week's episode, Donna saved Brooke from dying from the little lethal injection shit. And she was like, welcome back to life or something like that, or welcome back from the dead, something like that, she said. And then she took him to this hotel room, and pretty much, you know, she looked after Brooke, you know. She, uh, you know, gave her a little warm towel to, you know, cool herself down, you know, because I'm pretty sure all that medicine got thrown up and shit, blah, 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 everywhere, right? And then... Uh, after a while, after a couple of days and nights and shit, you know, dealing with Brooke, you know, hallucinating a little bit, you know, going a little crazy. And then that's why she wound down. She come back up in the room with some food and was basically telling Brooke, you know, she got this new identity. She can get this new passport. She can start a new life and forget her old one because everybody thinks she did anyway. And then Brooke manages to, like, reverse the whole thing and had this needle and was finna stab Donna or whatever she had in her hand. And she was like, why are you doing this? And Donna was like, you know, I want to make things right. And, uh, you know, Brooke was like, man, child, please, child, please. And uh, Donna was like, look, let's just say there are some things waiting for us uh, when we die. And I was like, oh, really? And um, Brooke lets her go eventually. And she was like, you should have just let me die. And Brooke sees this little newspaper on the, uh, the count, the little nightstand, actually. And... Uh, you know, she sees the event that's going down at Camp Redwood that Margaret and her people got set up and stuff for the weekend or whatever. And she was like, you know, she asked Donna, you know, you knew about this? And she was like, look, I can explain. But anyway, um, Brooke was basically saying, you know, she want to go back there and uh, she want to watch Margaret die. And, uh, you know, Donna was like, listen, it's not even worth it. You know what I'm saying? You've been through enough. Just let it go. Just start over. You 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 just start over. Start over and start a new life. And Brooke was like, man, hell no. She literally named the, the amount of days she spent in prison. She said, I spent 1,825 days in that hell the fuck hole. Like she said, she literally counted the damn days. That's a lot of damn days. And that's a lot of damn count. And Donna, all she could do was like look in silence and, you know, just listen to this woman. And, you know, Brooke was like, look, I'm finna go. I'm going back to Camp Redwood and this bitch is going to die. And I'm hoping they get Margaret old lying, conniving ass too. Somebody got to get her. Boom. But anyway, to get, get her mind off that, Donna, they go, they, they go to a skating rink. They having a ball. They having a ball. And after a while, they show the crowd. And I saw a familiar face. That was old boy from Murder House. Now, obviously, he playing a different character. But I, I recognized him right on the spot with his wig and his mustache and all of that. And uh, eventually, they get ready to go home. And then here comes old boy. And, and here his name is Bruce. And, you know, he was just introducing himself. He's talking about he need a ride to go get to his girlfriend or something like that. And I said, oh, here we go. And uh, they were like, no, you know, we don't do strangers and everything. So they leave. They get ready to go. The car is not working, right? So they try to look under the hood and everything to see what's going on. And then Bruce pops up again. So he offers to fix it. He fixes the car, the little distributor cap or whatever. And, uh, you know, she was like, they had offered him a ride and everything. So he gets in. They on the highway. He telling this story about, you know, the whole car with no headlights on if you flash them you're dead you know because that's a that's a real thing from what i heard like that and i heard they do it gang initiations and shit with that you see a car with no headlights on i'm gonna warn y'all you see a car with no headlights on at night especially don't flash your lights let them go about their business because just know it ain't good. They up to something. Don't do it. Like, so if you never heard about that, because I had saw some posts about that a couple of years ago, and I heard they do gang initiations and shit like that. 
just don't don't do it don't flash your lights let them go by and just mind your damn business i rebuke it okay boom but anyway um and brooke was like look you you're gonna have to go you you doing too much you trying to scare people i've dealt with people like you in the past five years and it just ain't gonna work you need to go so uh she tells donna to pull over and let his ass out and uh all of a sudden bruce was like you sure you about to do that donna i was like how the hell does he know donna what, what what's what's going on here do they have a history that we need to know about and uh before you know it a police car shows up and they was like oh hell and he gets out and he was like is everything okay and uh donna had told you know the officer about our boy in the back you know he's like we just met him and you know he was trying to make you know get you know get us to give him a ride and he bought up and mind you when they took off after he fixed the car it was like a poster of five missing girls and i was like oh shit and i had kind of thought about bruce i said dude this motherfucker has something to do with all these five missing girls who the hell is that calling while i'm making a damn video anyway as i was saying um yeah like i said this motherfucker has something to do with these five missing girls so anyway, as the officer was explaining, like, you know, do you hear about these girls being missing or whatever? And all of a sudden, Bruce shoots the damn officer. I said, what the fuck? So he gets out and they speed the fuck off. And as this officer is slowly limping, well, not limping, he's just like leaning and crawling on the ground at this point. And Bruce shoots him again and makes sure he shot him to kill his ass. And... That was a wrap for the officer. So we're back in the woods again, and uh, we got little chubby Jingle Jangles, the one that was along with the other two idiots that was, like, playing along as Mr. Jingle Jangles on the, you know, the night of the whole murder thing with Jingle Jangles. And he trying to take a piss. And here come the real Jingle Jangles, Benjamin. And he was like, you know, I met you before. You know what I'm saying? Why you still got that damn suit on? And here come the two other fools. They come pin him down. They about to kill him. Jingle jangles. He told them, uh, Montana said no killing to the festival. I said, oh, so y'all just finna kill people just, just to kill him. Huh? You old crazy ass people. So anyway, they took him. They, you know, they tied him up. And they brought him back to the rest of the crew. Xavier's there, Montana, Ray, Chet, everybody else that done died at this camp. And basically... Um, he was like, you know, what is it like to be a ghost? And, you know, Montana, she was just explaining like, oh, you know, you got a little pain here and there. And then Xavier was talking about how they was all wandering around before they settled in at the camp. Because, you know, I guess it's like pretty much a curse. You die at this camp, your ass is staying here. This is where your afterlife is going to be. And um, who brought it up? I think either Xavier or Chet. No, I think it was Chet. He brought up the lady in the white dress. And I'm like, who the hell is the lady in the white dress that haunts them and stuff? You know, chase after them, try to stab them, kill them, whatever, torture people. And lo and behold, the lady in the white dress is Benjamin's mother. Yes, the crazy woman, the crazy mama that was at the beginning of the episode blaming everybody for her son's death. When your ass should have been the one watching your two children. So Benjamin went on to talk about how the whole massacre thing started with her, really. And we're going to see why. So, notes, everyone. Um, I think he said it started in 1970-something or 1970. It could have been that. And uh, basically, after that day that she lost her son, Bobby, she went crazy. And we're going to see why. So, we went back to a night at the cabin or at the camp, shall I say. And Benjamin, he was asleep, so we thought. So, he wakes up. And he noticed that, I guess, where his mother was sleeping, it was, she wasn't there. And so, obviously, he was concerned. And so, he was like, Ma, Ma, where you at? And he goes to the other cabin. And all of a sudden, the damn lifeguard, he pops up out of nowhere, blood and bloodied up and all. And then he looks up, and all them other counselors dead, bodied, finito, finished, gone, done. You know what I'm saying? It looked like somebody called up the dark evil version of Thanos, okay, in this bitch, everybody dead, everybody in blood, everybody cut the fuck up, everybody stabbed, niggas is dead, and so she comes out of nowhere, she talking about something, it had to be done, Benji or Benjamin, whatever she called him, and, you know, she had the white dress on, his mama had the white dress on, blood all on her damn hands and fist and dress and hair and skin and everything, and she was like, you know, it's okay, it's all right, 
You know, it had to be done. And she was like, come here, give me a hug. While she holding this knife in her hand or whatever the fuck. And he was like, hell. Anyway, as I was saying, Benjamin was like, hell no, nah, I'm not hugging you. And so she snaps out of nowhere and she like automatically blames him again. Like, you know, this is all your fault. You should have been watching him or whatever the fuck she was saying. And so she goes after him and then she stabbed, I think he falls or something. And she stabbed him in the leg. I was like, your own son, you crazy bitch. And so he gets up. Well, he before he gets up, he kicked in the head before he could, she could stab him again. And he runs out the cabin. And so she runs back after him. He turned around and then like he stabbed her. You know what I'm saying? He stabbed her and now she's dying and she she he, he she grabs his face. He's saying I'm sorry. And I was like, at this point, it that needed to be done because she was about to kill you. And I was like, that shit is crazy. You already lost one son. You don't need to kill the other one to like avenge the other one. It, it, good night. So anyway, Benjamin went on to say, you know, but just like a curse at the cabin, but he needs to go see his mama. So Montana, she just volunteers Xavier and then she go once again, cause first she did it with Chet and that's how he ended up dying. And then, you know, Xavier's like, damn bitch, why me? Why you can't take your ass and go, what the hell are you scared of? So he takes him to the uh, the place where his mama was staying at. And uh, you know, Xavier's like, this is as far as I'm going, go ahead and meet your moms and all that. So he goes in the room and she's not in there at first. And he's just looking. It looked all dark and abandoned and whatnot. Looked real old and shit. And he looks at this little table or something. It's like this little odd looking toy. And uh, she turns around. I mean, he turns around and then there go mama. There goes mother. The lady in the white dress. So as he's talking to her, well, she's talking to him. She's still crazy. You know, she's like, oh, why you got so tall and... You know, you, you're still pathetic or whatever. You know, just talking down to him. You know, that same old crazy shit. Blaming him once again for his younger brother's death. And I was like, here we go again. So she went on to tell her little life story about how, you know, what she's been doing for these past several years and lifetimes and decades of her being on this damn uh, camp. And how she was saying how she was looking for Bobby, but she couldn't find him. She would just hear him, like, in fear or scared or something. And, uh... She went on to basically say how, you know, she saw him that one day uh, sitting when she when he was chilling with Margaret. And uh, he basically went on to say, like, so what did you do to Margaret or something like that? Come to find out, she was the whole mastermind of the whole massacre at the camp and everything. And, you know, setting him up to be this crazy man. Because, you know, we all know Margaret, you know, killed all them damn counselors. And so, you know... Once again, Benjamin talks about how, you know, I, he turned into this monster, something like that he said. He was like, you know, he was just all fucked up in the head, you know, on why she would do something like that. And, you know, she want, she basically wanted to say, well, she basically told him the wrong son died that day. I said, you bitch. Went on to say, oh, you know, it should have been you, that whole type of stuff. You know, she one of them type of mamas, you know. Maybe if your ass wasn't washing all them dishes and doing whatever the hell she was doing at that time, maybe your son wouldn't, wouldn't be in the damn lake in the first place, okay? And maybe you should have told him, no, you can't go swimming. No. But no, what did you tell him? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go swimming. You know what I'm saying? Benjamin, he made a mistake. He's a, He was a kid at the time. You ain't shit for blaming him for that. You're just wrong. And then not to mention you tried to kill your own, your own damn son, your other son. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. And she went on to talk about some type of new evil or something being reborn or something like that, she said. And Benjamin has said Ramirez. And, you know, he went on to say that he he's here to stop him. And she wants to punish him still for what happened to Bobby. And she was saying, you know, she feels sorry for his son because he had bought up that he had a son. And he, he said, you, you know, you killed the mother of my child. And she was like, he's better off dead. I said, you evil ass bitch and he just looked all distraught and mentally fucked up because his mama ain't shit his mom is crazy as hell even all them years later and she just a damn ghost floating around in a white dress but she is not pure or holy at all so we get back to donna and brooke they back on the road they they stopped they got stopped by a red light it's a car in front of them mind you and all of a sudden a police car crashes into the back of them and who the hell was it Bruce crazy ass. And then the guy in front of them, he gets out. He's like, what the hell's going on? Bruce manages to shoot old boy right in his little heart piece with a damn shotgun. I said, damn it, this is some bull ass shit right here. And they black the fuck out, obviously. And we go to commercial. So Brooke breaks up in the truck. 
a whole new truck with Bruce crazy ass. He got his shotgun right here on her chest piece and like low that like this just aiming right up to her head if she do something stupid. And I was like, where the hell is Donna at? Because we all know, you know, I guess they know each other. However, they know each other. And she was like, where the hell is Donna? He was like, oh, she's straight. She back there. He, he fixed the little rear view mirror or whatever. She down there on the ground, chained up and all. And he basically gave her two options. Either you drive off and drag her to her death, or I'm going to shoot you and he'll drag her himself. I said, what in the flying hell? And so she basically made set it up to make it seem like she didn't care about Dynamo. She was like, you know, fuck her. She shouldn't have gave you a ride. And so as she's preparing to drive off, he's like, what are you waiting for? Holding the gun at the head again, you crazy bastard. And so she hits the brakes. She drives a little bit. She hits the brake. His head slammed to the glass and everything. And uh, she backs up. And then as he's getting out, she, she shoots him in the balls. And he's screaming and everything. Donna gets from under that damn car. And she's about to choke his ass the fuck out with the damn chains. He had her chained up in like on some slavery type of shit. I said, bullshit. Yeah. And, she, and Brooke was like, Brooke, no. Brooke was like, Donna, wait. Donna, wait. And Donna was like, hell no. I'm going to choke this motherfucker ass out. He can't get away with this shit. And Brooke was like, who said that? And all of a sudden, the three amigos show up. Margaret ass, um, the dude with the wig, I forgot his name, and Trevor. So they all talking about everything that's going on tonight, the event and all. And, you know, all of a sudden, Trevor looks across the road and sees Montana right before this big ass tour bus shows up. And they go, what she called him? Cuckoo, Gaga, or something like that. I'm guessing that's supposed to be Billy Idol. I don't know. Somebody let me know in the comments. You know what I'm saying? I don't know everybody from the 80s. You know, I know Prince. I know Michael. Okay, don't judge me. I know Whitney. Don't judge me. But anyway, he shows up. She get all excited. And uh, Trevor, you know, he goes into the woods. Because like I said, he saw Montana. So she pops up again behind him. And he was like, I thought you were dead. She said, I am. And uh, she was like, I mean, he was like, I missed you, and pretty much they start making out in the little woods and whatnot. We all know what came next after that. So we get right back to Brooke, Donna, and crazy-ass Bruce. They got his ass tied up in all hands, his mouth, everything, just tied the fuck up. And so she snippety snips his two thumbs off, and she was like, bitch, your hitchhiking days are over. Over. And so his thumbs are just bleeding the fuck out, just and his ass is just right the fuck there. So she gets her little backpack and she gets the gun. Ka -ka, and uh, she's on her way back to Camp Redwood. And, uh, you know, Donna, she didn't really say much. And uh, she tags along with Brooke. So we got old boy Cuckoo Gaga, Cuckoo Kaja, whatever his name was. I'm so sorry, but I just, I forgot. I'm guessing that was supposed to be Billy Idol because when all of a sudden he was chilling, listening to his music, he turned around and nigga Ramirez. And he was like, who are you? Ramirez said, I'm your biggest fan. And uh, basically, he had showed, um, Ramirez had showed a boy his hand with the satanic ass star. And he was like, you know, when you make a deal with the devil, you know, you in there for life or something like that. And before you know it, oh boy, he tries to run away. Ramirez catches him, slices his damn throat from what I from what I saw. And all of a sudden, the guy with the funny wig, he gets back on the, he goes to the bus. He got this little, you know, gift basket and all that with full of fruits and little labels and all that. And he gets to the bus. He killed everybody on the tour bus. Everybody dead on the tour bus. Everybody dead. Everybody dead. Everybody cut the fuck up. Everybody sliced up. Everybody bleeding out. Everybody dead. Just body. Niggas is dead. So we see Benjamin. He chilling by the lake. Sharpening this knife. And here come his crazy ass mama again. And she was like, you have no right to sit here where my son died. And you know, you don't have any right to be here. Just blaming him once again. He was like, look, you don't get to tell me. You don't get a, a, a blame, whatever he was telling her. And he was like, look, didn't I tell you already? This, this guilt is eating at me. Anyway, as I was saying again, he tells her off and tells her to just chill the fuck out. He was my brother, okay? He was your son, but he was my brother. I am still feeling the guilt. You do not have to continue to blame me. I know what the hell happened. I was there. Okay? It's eating at me to this day. Leave me the fuck alone. And so they just talking for a while. And he's basically telling her how he still got to kill Ramirez. And he got to protect his son. He said, what kind of man would he be if he don't protect his son? And she went on to say to him, 
If you die by the hands of Ramirez, he's going to make sure your ass don't get back at all. You're just going to rot in hell because you made a deal with the devil, right? But she said if you die by your own hands, right, um, then you got to do what you got to do. So that means I'm guessing you got to, he got to make sure he body the fuck out of Ramirez. So we're going to see how that shit go next week. Um, so eventually she gets up and he holding her. She was holding his little hand. She gets up. He turned around. She's gone. So he turns back to the lady. He's like basically telling his brother, I'm sorry. I know you're out there and you know, I'm not going to curse my son the way I cursed you. And he proceeds to stab himself. So Jingle Jangles dies once again. He pops back up again. He get, gets the knife and he, he ready to body somebody. He ready to body somebody. And the episode ends. So yes, Mr. Mr. Jingle Jangles will be returning to Camp Redwood once again to body crazy ass Ramirez. His crazy motherfucking ass. But this was another good episode. I enjoyed the whole scene with Donna and Brooke getting their life roller skating. Now, I ain't been roller skating in years. Like, literally years. Years. It's been a minute since I've even seen a pair of skates, okay? Them brown ass roller skates with the orange wheels. It's been a minute, y'all. I might teach myself how to roller skate again. Hopefully, I don't fall and bust my ass. I mean, I've gotten older now, so you know what I'm saying. But anyway, I enjoyed this episode. I can't wait to see how this is all going to play out. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, okay, I'm hoping somebody, I don't care if it's Montana at this point, Xavier, hell, Ray, Brooke, I kind of I kinda want Brooke and Donna to team up and kill Margaret Ann, because we all know Margaret, she's the mastermind of all this, and she getting all the riches and the rags and the, and the lavish luxury lifestyle, while these kids are all dead at this damn camp, except for Brooke, so hopefully Brooke, she'll survive, and she'll kill Margaret, and hopefully Mr. Jingle Jangles will kill Ramirez and we could all go to get on with our lives. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this is all going to play out. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Uh, so with that being said, please, if you made it to the end of this video, please hit the like button. Okay, comment below. Uh, let me know what, let me know like some theories from you guys. What you guys think, what you guys think is going to happen in these next couple of episodes? Who you think is going to kill who? Do you think Margaret is going to die? Who, if not, who, who you think is going to die? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you want Margaret to die? Somebody let me know in the comment section. If you think Margaret is going to die, who you think is going to do it? Because, you know, you always you, it's always a twist with these shows. You always think it's one person end up being another person. So, y'all let me know in the comment section. If you think Margaret is going to die, let me know who you think is going to kill her ass. Let me know. Matter of fact, where the hell is Birdie at? They have yet to show her motherfucking ass. I mean, didn't she die too? Where's Birdie? Where's she at? Let her kill Margaret. Let her kill that bitch. Anyway... And also, since this is mainly a reaction channel, please let me know anything I can react to for you guys. I'll do that soon. And uh, hit that subscribe button and follow me on my Instagram and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys later on. Thank you all for watching. Happy Halloween. Stay warm. Stay safe. Enjoy your little sweet treats and all. I think I'm just chill. Bitch, I'm going to watch Dead Silence. Okay, somebody remember that movie. Pinocchio's Revenge, Queen of the Dam with Aaliyah, something like that. And now I'll see you guys next week for my episode review of episode 8. Rest in Pieces, I think it's called. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Taylor Rain, and I'm out.